I'm pretty excited to tell you about Newton's third law today because this is the first time that I get a chance to actually teach you some physics. Everything up to this point we could really describe as definitions. We defined a force as something that causes an acceleration. We've defined velocity. We've defined acceleration. We've defined vectors. None of this is required by nature. Newton's third law is something that we didn't come up with. Newton's third law is not a definition. Newton's third law is something that nature told us. It's not something that falls out of the math. It's not something that can come from the definition. It's something that's an intrinsic property of the fabric of the universe. That's really cool. Newton's third law tells us what forces actually come from. So without further ado, here's Newton's third law. Whenever one object exerts a force on a second object, the second object exerts an equal and opposite force on the first along the same line of interaction. You may have also heard this law as, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. In that context, the action and reaction are both forces. It doesn't mean anything, it means a force. Another way that we can express Newton's third law as a formula is this way. Basically, the force of A on B is the negative of the force of B on A. What that leaves out is this last clause of the text definition along the same line of interaction. At this point, we don't have to worry about that line of interaction thing. When we talk about torques much later in the course, the same line of interaction will come back to us and be important again. But there's an awful lot inside this Newton's third law. It might seem a little weird. In fact, it might even seem wrong. This is something that students often disagree with. So I'm going to try to convince you that it really is true, because in fact it is. And it's true in all situations. So here's a case where you might think that Newton's third law doesn't work. Consider the case of a collision between a car and a bug. When that happens, you see a big effect on the bug, and essentially no effect on the car, except for the splat of the bug. So how can this be true? Well, think about what a force means by the definitions that we've had already. Remember, a force causes an acceleration, but the effect of the force is moderated by the mass of the object. So here if we have a relatively small car, say one and a quarter metric tons, and a fairly large insect, say a quarter of a gram, well, we have a huge mass difference here, something on the factor of about a million. Since acceleration of an object is the net force on it divided by its mass, if these two objects, the car and the bug, experience the same magnitude of force, one of them is going to experience a much greater magnitude of acceleration by the same factor as their masses differ. So if there's a million times more mass in the car, there's going to be a million times more acceleration on the bug. That's why the bug comes out of this interaction quite a bit the worse than the car does. So with this, every action there is an equal and opposite reaction, those are forces. Those are not accelerations. Those are not velocity changes. So to conclude, all forces, it turns out, are interaction forces. Whenever there is a force on some object, that object exerts an opposite force on the thing that exerted the force on it. So every force has to be exerted by a thing. Forces don't come out of just nowhere. It's always one object interacting with another object. Objects might be in contact. You can have contact forces. The objects might be at a distance. Gravity is an interaction force. It's a long-range force. The wind acting on you might... You don't see the air acting on you, but the air is moving. The air is pushing on you. The air is pushing on a sail of a sailboat. The air is pushing on the turbine of a windmill. When you jump, you're pushing up off the ground. What do you do? Which way do you push? You push down. The fact that you jump off the ground is because there is that other force, that partner interaction force, pushing up on you. Everything is an interaction force between objects. And when you think about it, there's another rather interesting necessity out of this rule. And that's this. Anytime one thing accelerates, that's from a force. With that force, there is an equal and opposite force on something else. 
So every time one thing accelerates, something else has to accelerate in the opposite direction. That's a rather interesting and perhaps unexpected result. But if you think about it, you'll realize that this really does work all the time. It's one of the really cool things about physics.